What's up YouTube? Okay, so in this video we're actually going to get into shooting video with your Pentax camera. Now there are some differences between uh, say for example my K3 which I'm recording this on right now and something like the K30. Uh, I'm not sure which other bodies uh, will probably be different. Um, most likely, well obviously K50 because K30 and K50 are pretty much the same camera. I'm assuming K70, KS1, KS2 would be more in line with the options and the setup on the K30. Uh, K3, K1, K32, K12, KP, they're all probably very similar. Uh, as well as the K70, I would... Um, it might actually be like this. I'm not entirely sure. Don't quote me on it. You'll have to kind of figure it out if you own one. Um... But between these two cameras, you should be able to see what the differences are. You'll should you should be able to find uh, where the options are in the menu for changing different settings. Uh, now, at the very basics, the rule of thumb with video is whatever your frame rate is. So if you've set your camera for uh, 24 frames per second, you shoot the shutter speed at twice that frame rate. Um, so, well or as, at least as close to double that frame rate, because obviously 24 frames per second, we don't have 48, so you'd have to shoot at 150th. Um, now, at the same time, if you're shooting 30 frames per second, you want to shoot at 160th of a second for your shutter speed. Uh, 60 frames a second, you want to shoot at 1 one 120th of a second. Now, 60 frames per second is more it's very basic slow mo ish if you want to do some slow motion kind of stuff because uh, it's more frame rate that's being captured per second um, and the video footage you'll receive from 60 frames per second is a lot crisper uh, however it's almost like CG um, with 24 frames per second like what you see in movies and what you see with your own eyes it's natural you know you get the motion blur when things are moving fast it's not too blurry but it just looks natural any frame rate above 24 uh, like for example 30 30 is good um, you know 30 60 those um, start to eliminate the blur and it becomes slightly artificial almost like it's been rendered and not actually shot as natural video but anyway that's for a whole different topic I'm just gonna walk you through these two cameras then hopefully you'll be able to actually deep dive into starting to do some videos for yourself and let's just get right on to it Blah! all right so here I've got my k30 and you'll notice something here now I'm in movie mode right now and if I go into the um, drive mode here uh, you'll actually see there's only two options remote control on or off so if you have the remote on and you go into the menu I'm already in the movie mode area now you'll notice that you cannot enable movie shake reduction it's grayed out um, I'm not gonna get into interval movies because that would require a whole video all on its own um, now when you go into the drive mode and you turn the remote off now you can enable shake reduction now as I was saying I suggest you do not use shake reduction and I will show you why uh, right now I am actually shooting in HD or actually no let's go full HD so 1080 and we'll do 24 frames per second now these are the limits uh, if you're shooting in 1080p you only have 30 25 and 24 now if you go into HD and look at the frames now you can choose from 60 frames per second 50 30 25 and 24 I like to keep it natural looking so generally I just shoot uh, 24 frames per second now you'll see here uh, since shake reduction is on I'm gonna record what's in front of the screen and I'm going to move the camera back and forth like this and you'll actually see what happens 
when you view it back. Now what I'm going to do is go in and disable shake reduction and I'm going to do the same thing. Now let's see what that actually translates into. So this is the one where I had the shake reduction on and you'll notice the jello effect that's happening in the camera. You see everything starts waving at the top of the door there. And let's go to the one that does not have shake reduction on. So massive, massive difference. And uh, that's pretty much it for the K30. Um, there isn't really much else to go into. Uh, most video stuff, I mean, it's just a matter of understanding that you have to have double the shutter speed of your frame rate in order for the video to look natural. And that's pretty much it. And uh, now I'll go on to the K3 and show you all the options that are in that one. And the rest of the principles are all exactly the same. Okay, so now this is the back of my K3. Uh, so I'm already in movie mode. And again, you'll notice here, shake reduction is off. Why is that? Well, if you go into the drive modes, you'll see remote control is on. So it's the same thing as with the K30. The only other option in here is this is where you would get to the interval movie recording. And these are all your, you know, and you can do 4K on the K3. Uh, however, with that said, um, like I mentioned before, this is, that would be a completely different video because it's a totally different thing. Uh, now, if you go into the menu, you'll notice that uh, you now have a recording sound level. So you can adjust the recording level uh, from the camera itself using either the internal microphone or even if you plug an external microphone in, you can amplify the signal uh, so it becomes more sensitive. And there's digital filters and all that fun stuff and changing your exposure settings. You've got TAV, AV, program, and manual. Uh, on the K30, I didn't actually show that, but I should have. Uh, the only options you have are manual, automatic, or aperture value. So program, aperture, and uh, manual are the only options on the K30. Now, when you go into uh, the frame rate, uh, so I'm in full HD, full 1080. Now, going into the frame rate on the K3, you'll see there's 24, 25, 30, uh, 50i and 60i. Now, 60 and 50i are both what's known as interlaced. Um, it has to do with the way uh, the recorded pixels are drawn across a screen. Um, basically, in layman's terms, it's just a lower quality, and I suggest you stick with anything that is in P, uh, because that would be the highest quality that you can get. And you'll see, you'll notice here in HD, everything is in P, right? So 24, it's progressive scan is what the P stands for. Uh, you can look that up on, uh, on Google or whatever your favorite search engine is. Um, so anyway, we're going to go 24 P in full HD. And uh, right now, shake reduction is off. So let me enable it. And you'll see that it's the same issue occurs. Uh, let me get this up to 32. All right, there we go. You'll notice the same issue occurs with the K3. Um, it, it's just, it has to do with the electronic stabilization. It's not very good. Never has been very good. Actually, I'm actually pretty impressed. This actually isn't as bad not as bad as I thought it would be, actually. It's not nearly as bad as it is on the K30, that's for sure. Wow. I'm actually pretty impressed. 
Ah, that's because the remote was off. Okay, so that so the first one was with shake reduction. Was that with shake reduction on? You know what? Let me do that again. All right. Off. Go in the menu. Okay, yeah, shake reduction was off. Okay. So that one was with shake reduction off. Now let's turn it on. Okay, that makes more sense. My bad. It's actually still not as bad as the K30. I'm surprised. It's actually not that bad. I'm very, very impressed. Okay, so this is with it off. Uh, let's play it back. And let's do the next one. Okay, actually, yeah, it, it is pretty bad. It's just not, it's not as wobbly, but it still does wobble. Yeah, you can see it all along here is waving. But um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the preliminary uh, things in regards to shooting video with your Pentax camera, things to pay attention to. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's really all I got to say about that. You like this, eh? Wardrobe change. <laughs> All right, but seriously. Um, okay, so just to wrap this up, things to keep in mind, quick pointers. Do not use the image stabilization when you're shooting video, unless you have a Pentax K5. The K5 is the only Pentax camera that actually used mechanical image stabilization by using the sensor to counteract movement. Um, so if you're not using a K5, turn off the shake reduction in movie mode, uh, use a gimbal, use any other type of uh, stabilizer for the camera. Just don't use the one that's built in because it's not very good. Makes everything wavy as you saw. Uh, mind you, the K3 is not as bad as the K30, but it is still there. That whole... Uh, other than that, remember, use double the shutter speed to your frame rate and your videos should come out nice and crisp. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. That's it for me. You'll see me on my next video. I'm out.